you have a title here at the library, right? Yep, I'm the president of the board of trustees. I'm quite proud of that because a lot of people think that uh, someone with Tourette's syndrome might not be able to go to a library. People sometimes say to me, you know, oh my gosh, you know, how can you even go to a library? And I'm proud of th to be uh, the board president here. Yep. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about growing up with Tourette's. What I mean, you seem like you're you are at a point where you are very comfortable with it. You're you educate people on it. What were you always like that, or did it take some time for you to become okay? Uh, I took a while to become okay. Um, as a child, I didn't have any symptoms, which is unusual for Tourette syndrome. Um, a lot of times, I say. Tourette's syndrome doesn't follow its own rules. A lot of people have a lot of expectations about Tourette's syndrome that they think, you know, it has to fit. And uh, so there's so many ex exceptions to the rules that people think exist for Tourette's. Uh, so for me, one of the exceptions is I didn't really see any ticks or anything that was noticeable. We think I probably did have some noticeable ticks. Uh, when I was a child, uh, but uh, it all started when I was 19. Uh, I was at home from college on spring break, just enjoying a boring spring break, doing nothing. And all of a sudden I started making these loud whooping noises. Uh, that was my first tick. Uh, and um, we weren't sure what it was. It, we thought it was hiccups for a long time. Um, so it did take a long time to uh, figure out what it was, because uh, a lot of doctors had a lot of opinions. Um, and it also took a while to uh, just be comfortable with it. Uh, initially, no, I was not comfortable with it. Um, but I had good support from friends and family. Um, and a lot of people in my life you know, helped me become more comfortable with it. And uh, I have to give credit to two wonderful women who helped me figure out the, 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 the diagnosis, and helped me put together all of the different information from all of the different um, people who had all these different opinions. Uh, one was uh, a college girlfriend who said, I don't think you have hiccups, because that's what we thought it was at the time. We initially thought it was hiccups. And then uh, after her, uh, my wife said, I think it's Tourette's syndrome. I think that doctor that said Tourette's, I think that was the right one. So two wonderful women uh, both helped me uh, become more comfortable with it and helped me uh, diagnose it and, and nail down the diagnosis. Once I had random words and phrases coming out of my mouth that really solidified okay yeah it's definitely Tourette's you know just in case I had any doubts <laughs> yeah and so those first few months years of having those ticks and not really knowing what they were was that <laughs> frustrating for you were you confused like what oh yeah was I yeah I was very confused what is going on what is this why is this happening will this ever stop um, how am I going to be a person in society when I'm making these loud whooping noises that are disruptive and disturbing? And um, this all started back in 1991 when I was going to college in New York and living in New Jersey. And, you know, people can be cruel, you know, adults and children can be cruel, especially when you're making, you know, random noises, random noises that are loud. Um, uh, but uh, thankfully, I developed a pretty thick skin and a, and a good understanding of why people are so reactive to the way they are to my condition. And uh, little by little, I just developed uh, using sense of humor and, you know, a, a thick skin and a, a positive attitude. Um, you know, help me realize that, you know, I can, I can do this. I can manage this. Um, I, I can, I can tell people what this is and I can be, uh, you know, eventually I became a teacher and, you know, part of me wants to always educate people. So I, I, when people, you know, call me out and say, why are you making those random noises or words? I'll tell them, I'll explain to them and, and um, they might get much more of an explanation than they thought they were ever going to get. So. Yeah. And so like, Obviously, you've done, you've made a point to be good about it and to teach others. I mean, maybe they're your students. Himalayas, Manalapan, Rakin, Pinion Steering, Suv Ganyot, Zimbabwe, Argentina, Nicaragua, Hemingway, Peru. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Go ahead. What were we saying? <laughs> Before we interrupted. No, it's okay. Um, when you Woo! meet another person who might have Tourette's or something that they are having a hard time with that yeah. they can't control, whether it's neurological or physical, how 
are you able to relate to them? Oh, but yeah, every once in a while when you meet someone with Tourette's, it's like, oh my gosh, there's not that many of us out there. And it's so, it really is exciting to meet someone with Tourette's. And a lot of times I think it's it's like you compare notes. You, you, you First you gotta say, do you have Tourette's? Oh, you have Tourette's, I have Tourette's. You know, so that's you know, sometimes an exciting moment. But then uh, very quickly, I think it become, starts uh, a comparison of what's in your toolbox. You know, how do you deal with it? You know, both on a personal level, there's two different aspects of dealing with Tourette's. There's how do I deal with it for me? And then Tourette's affects the rest of my world. You know, it affects people who know me and don't know me because they hear ticks and, you know, it throws them off guard it startles them it, it's it's disruptive it's confusing um you know so a lot of times we talk about you know how do you deal with it you know we, we, we compare notes compare what our best strategies are you know i mean i have my own sort of rules that i live by that i've developed and, and managed over the years so for example you know i i if we're in a restaurant and uh, my wife and my son know that my rule is that um, if someone comes up to them and says, hey, what's going on? What is that? You know, they know that I want to be the one to, to talk about it. And so they know to say, oh, you should ask my dad. You should ask or you should ask my husband. And so a lot of times when you meet Tourette, someone with Tourette's, you, you start comparing your rules and your habits and your strategies and your best practices. And, you know, and then you might pick up you know, a, a great new idea. Yeah. And so when you are teaching and I know that um, in the release that they sent us, it says that you used to mute your mic during your ticks and yeah. now you don't. Um, is there obviously at the beginning of each year you have different students. So yeah. is there like a learning curve? For them? How do you explain it? Um, I tell them at the beginning of, of, a, of a course that I have Tourette syndrome and that we might get some occasional interruptions. Um, and um, it's it, the learning curve is surprisingly quick. Uh, people don't realize that, okay, I make noises, you know, and I, yeah, that happens. And I make, say, random words and phrases that can be startling and distracting. But students, young and old, um, I teach both at the high school level as my, my main job is teaching high school students. Uh, I have a side job where I teach uh, elementary school students, uh, where I teach religion at my synagogue. Um, and younger old, they get used to it. It doesn't take long for them to acclimate. Um, they don't have me all day, every day. Um, so you know, they just have me for one class you know, at a time. Um, and uh, they, they, they get used to it very quickly. And, and thankfully, there's, our society is getting better with understanding neurodiverging conditions. And students are now a little more familiar with Tourette's than they used to be. Um, and so there's, uh, they're, they're getting better with understanding because now, now it's more common that they know someone who has Tourette's. Um, every once in a rare while I get a student with Tourette's and oh boy, do we bond, <laughs> you know? So, and I know I have one coming up next year, uh, a student with, with Tourette's that I'll have next year. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, just comparing notes and talking and being supportive of that student. Um, so yeah, but stu there, I think there's a little bit more awareness. So they don't know a lot about Tourette's. So I do need to tell them what it is and, and what it isn't and what it is for me and what it could be for other people. Um, but it's part of the education, so they, they, they get used to it. And uh, oddly enough, I think, I think the younger ones are better able to acclimate compared to the older ones. The old, the, uh, grown adults might take a long time to acclimate, whereas uh, younger kids and students seem to be, they just seem to be a little bit more open and r relaxed maybe, and maybe be more familiar. So they seem to be uh, better equipped to um handle it absolutely yeah and there a moment where you were just like i don't know why i why i try to hide it yeah yeah after about a year or two or so of of uh muting uh the ticks i decided wait i don't need to hide it let them let them hear the ticks you know um so yeah i, I after muting the ticks because i started thinking you know if i was in a regular school 
you know, a, a brick school, I wouldn't be able to turn the ticks off in a brick school. Um, so, um, yeah, I said, might as well just let, let the ticks roll. And, uh, one advantage of teaching online, and I know we're going to talk about online school in just a moment. Um, but one advantage of teaching online is that I do have a chat so I can have this big, long ramble of ticks and then I'll just start teaching by putting stuff in the chat and the, the students will be like, Whoa, you can type stuff while you have ticks like yes i can I'm, I'm not that good at multitasking but i can actually start typing directions into the chat to keep the class going while i have ticks wow. <laughs> yeah. that's actually really interesting so it's not really like occupying your brain space it, it occupies a lot of it yeah i mean but while i have ticks i mean i'm fully aware of everything that's going on i know what i'm saying and what i'm doing and i might be able to um, it, I, the typing is a little bit slower because it is quite the multi ta multitasking uh, challenge, and I'm never very good at multitasking. But yeah, I, I've over the years I've developed at least the ability to to put a, a few quick you know notes or directions uh, into the chat, or sometimes I'll just put into the chat, "Hang on, Tourette syndrome ramble, be ready in a moment," you know, yeah. and and that just kind of lightens the mood anyway too. Yeah, definitely, yeah. and I'm sure it probably helps the kids too. Like it probably makes it a much more relaxed environment mm -hmm. for them also. And so teaching while, especially online, what is that like um, interacting with those students who also might either struggle with a neurological disorder that they have or physical disorder that they might have um for for them um it's great for them to see me as a teacher you know someone who's successful and has a professional job and a, and a life and um and is is making it work um so it, it is inspirational for them and it's helpful for them to know that i understand them and that you know that i i'll i will understand their needs uh, because, you know, there's this big, wide range of conditions that fall under the neurodivergent um, uh, family. And a lot of our students are in that category. And a lot of our students are coming to our school because it, that's this is the environment that they need because brick school you know, maybe didn't work for them. Um, so um, it works quite well. I, I'm very sympathetic to our students, um, you know, they, a lot of our students did not fit into public school and I didn't, you know, or brick school. And I felt like I, I didn't really fit too well into brick schools either. Um, and, you know, I've heard stories of, of students saying, you know, a principal told me I should just drop out, you know, and I've had a, a principal or two, uh, you know, tell me that I should just resign. You know, so, you know, they didn't fit in. I didn't fit in. Now we've got a place that works so well for us. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy uh, being their teacher, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure they appreciate you. You probably leave a really lasting impact on them because you're able to relate to them in a different way. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah. A lot of them are just like so happy to have someone who who firsthand knows and understands them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to add? Anything you feel like people need to know? Uh, well, I mean, Inside School of Michigan is, uh, is a great uh, opportunity for students. Uh, we're an alternative education school, um, or now the term is often called opportunity youth. So we have a lot of students who are type of students who are always sitting in the back row or hate school or don't want to come to school or have life challenges that have made school difficult for them. Uh, we are uh, one of four charter schools uh, under that are powered by Stride and K-12 uh, in the state of Michigan. And uh, we're a full real school charter school. Uh, we're supervised by uh, Michigan Department of Education. Um, we have all certified teachers because that's a Michigan requirement. Um, and uh, our, we're under the, we're authorized and supervised by Central Michigan University. Um, charter schools in Michigan are legally, have the same legal status as public schools. So we have to do all the same things as, as public schools, as certified teachers and so forth and the curriculum. Uh, so our students get a, a real diploma. It's, it, it's a real Michigan uh, curriculum diploma uh, that our students earn and uh, they're able to catch up at our school. Our school is specifically of the schools, of the four schools that are powered by Stride. Our school is uh, the Alternative Ed High School, 
Um, and so our students can come to our school and catch up and get their diploma, get, a, get their diploma and, and celebrate. And, um, you know, some of our students will, will celebrate getting a D, you know, and that, that to me is, is, is such a, an, an incredible thing is for a student to celebrate passing a class with any grade. They're excited. They're excited to get their diploma. And uh, we give them lots of alternative pathways to earn those credits um, in a, you know, in a manner that works well for them. We, we do things like having evening uh, tutoring and giving students the ability to test out or work ahead um, so that they can get their uh, diploma um, as soon as they uh, possibly can. Yeah. Yeah.